I just installed Chinese Cookie Run Kingdom when suddenly, I got banned from the game. I was accused of crimes such as harassment, malicious marketing, and fraud. I refuse to accept this. In order to prove that I deserve to play this game, I'm gonna go undercover and sneak into Chinese Cookie Run. To take that a step further, I'm gonna try to beat story mode without getting banned again. For the past few days, I spent way too much time playing this game. I'll explain what happened, but first we need to go all the way back to the beginning. First of all, what is Chinese Cookie Run? Well, it's a different version of the game not meant to be played by people outside of China. The only ways for someone like me to gain access is by using something called WeChat. It's a Chinese messaging app and you need it to log into the game. There's also another messaging app called Tencent QQ that you can use to log in, but you need a Chinese phone number to use it. It's definitely not an option for me. So on December the 28th, I tried to make a WeChat account. After all, it was the day Chinese Cookie Run was released. When creating a WeChat account, everyone has this stupid QR code. It needs to be scanned by someone who already owns WeChat to verify your account. And then something unexpected happened. When I tried making my account, I skipped a QR code somehow. It never showed up for me, and I didn't do anything at all. I assumed I just had good luck, so then I opened up Chinese Cookie Run. It didn't work, and all of a sudden, my WeChat account was banned. I know I got banned because I skipped a QR code, but I did nothing at all to make that happen. After that, I was met with an unblock screen. Pause to read. The only way to get unbanned was to get someone else's phone number. Like, looking get someone's actual real life phone number and putting it in here. Nobody on the internet could help me because, you know, you aren't supposed to give people your phone number. And I don't know anyone in real life who has WeChat, so I was pretty much screwed. Now I need both a QR code scan and a phone number. It's not happening. A few days later, I decided to start live streaming. The live stream title was called Goofing Off Send Me Video Ideas. During the live stream, a lot of people suggested that I play Chinese Cookie Run. Well, I guess they're never gonna get that video. And then, all of a sudden, one of my friends named Mr. Duck had an idea. He told me I could use his WeChat account to play the game. This was pretty much the perfect opportunity. The nice thing about Chinese Cookie Run is that you can have two save files. There's a catch though. One must be on the Dark Cacao server and the other must be on the Hollyberry server. So then, Mr. Duck allowed me to use his Hollyberry save file. He's also a Cookie Run YouTuber and you gotta subscribe to him. He let me onto his account and everything. His link's in the description. So anyways, I logged into the game and it worked. In the beginning, I killed Dark Enchantress, read some Chinese dialogue that I didn't understand at all, but then something really bad happened. You know how after Dark Enchantress steals the 5 soul gems a video appears? Well, when it showed up for me, I got a black screen. I tried clicking the skip button. It didn't work. At this moment, I realized the longer it takes for me to beat story mode and prove my worth, the higher the chance I'll run into a game breaking bug. Even worse, both me and Mr. Duck might get banned for sharing accounts. This was no longer a normal playthrough. I managed to get past a black screen by restarting my game. Anyways, here's my plan. In Chinese Cookie Run, only the first 7 episodes are unlocked so far. At the moment, episodes 8, 9, and 10 are time locked. You physically can't play them until the developer releases them. Basically, chapter 7 is the final episode. My goal is to beat 730 in the least amount of time possible. In this video, the greatest challenge I'll face is resource management. Stamina jellies will be an issue, especially when speedrunning. I need to manage my cookies, builds, kingdom, and everything else. I need to do this efficiently before anything goes wrong. Alright, let's begin day one by choosing our username. I think Chiro YouTube's a good name. Wait a second. Dang it, the name was taken already. You're also probably wondering how I translated this. So there's this website that translates words from images. I'm gonna be using this thing throughout the whole video. Keep in mind that some of its translations are completely inaccurate. I guess I'll just have to use the name Chiro instead. Dang it. Okay, so the tutorial of the game is pretty much the same as Global Cookie Run. I'll just speed through it with a little montage, I guess. Hold up. Ginger Brave gets an epic costume? Wow, I see how it is. Talk about version favoritism. Oh yeah, this costume is paywalled. And here's the paid packages. At least it's not as bad as Global Cookie Run, I guess. I should mention that if you're not from mainland China, you can't spend money on this game. People like me are forced to be free to play, and it makes the game harder. Speaking of money, let's do some gacha pulls now. This banner right here allows you to get a free epic after 30 pulls. This banner contains Golden Othmanthus. She's exclusive to Cookie Run China, and she's the best DP 
DPS in the whole game. We also have a pure vanilla nether gacha. It's not that special though. It's pretty much the same as the nether gachas in the global version. Alright, let's do a gacha pull. I'll get something really good since I'm a YouTuber, right? Oh, never mind. This time, I'm gonna get something good. Aw, oh, come on. Okay, well, here's a better pull. I got an epic this time around, and then I got Squid Ink. They're not the best DPS in the Chinese version. Latte, Espresso, and Poison Mushroom are all better, but for now, this is okay. Afterwards, I got another epic, but this one was really bad. I got Milk Cookie. He's still terrible, but at least it's better than a rare cookie, right? Here's my new team for episode 1. Princess, Milk, Chili Pepper, Squid Ink, and Custard. We're gonna be stuck with Custard for quite a while. For the early game, he's actually a really good healer. It's not like I have any other choice. We'll be fine though, it's only episode 1. Let's start speedrunning now. We're done with world 1 already. And now it's time to look at our kingdom. You have to manage your kingdom if you want to progress in the game. But I noticed a few things that are different than global cookie run. For example, whatever the heck this thing is. It's supposed to be a landmark that gives you star jellies and quests. After you complete all the quests, a flower in the middle is supposed to blossom. It's a pretty creative landmark, I guess. They also made the trio wishes pink, but they left a little surprise on the inside. They made the trio wishes chest way easier to obtain. Talk about version favoritism. There's also many special events like this one. It's related to Goldoth Mansus cookie, and even with translations, I didn't really understand how it worked. I kinda clicked a bunch of random buttons to complete the event. Eventually, I found a really overpowered shop. It has crystals, cookie cutters, and even Goldoth Mansus soul stones. I just had to buy a bunch of these. It was a really good deal. After that, I was able to unlock her. This was huge, since she's the best DPS in the whole game. I also pulled Tiger Lily. She's garbage though. Here's our new team for episode 2. Tiger Lily's not that much of an improvement, but but I'm really curious about Golden Othmancis Cookie. What exactly does she do? Well, let's find out. Her projectile is really slow, but it kills everyone. Her skill heals the whole team, and she even charms the opponents like Kumio. She does some other things, but I don't know how to read her skill because it's in Chinese. Anyways, let's use her to dominate World 2. All of a sudden, I got Madeline and Dark Choco. Although it was a bit of an interruption, this was a really big deal. It's about time that I go over the meta. The best tanks in the game would be Werewolf, Madeline, Dark Choco, and Red Velvet. I'm not sure about Molossos, but I think she's okay. The best DPS cookies would be Goldoth Mansus, Poison Mushroom, Latte, and Espresso. And the best healers would be Pure Vanilla, Pomegranate, and maybe Cream Puff. This image is incomplete since I don't know the whole meta. Madeline is really good in story mode. I think he's one of the best picks. On the other hand, Dark Choco not as good. He's definitely meta in guild battle though. After I obtained these two epics, I pretty much destroyed episode 2. I also obtained some treasures along the way. I got the rare scroll. This and the epic scroll are the best treasures in the game. I also got the jelly watch. It's good in every single game mode except for arena. Uh, don't ask why. It's just the way it is. Everything seemed to be perfectly fine at the moment. I had a good team set up and I had good treasures. But then, I ran into a huge problem. I was running out of stamina jellies. The most I could do was buy more stamina stamina jellies with crystals, but this wouldn't last forever. Now, your average player wouldn't care about running out of stamina jellies, but remember, I'm evading a van. I gotta beat story mode before I get caught. After contemplating my speedrun, I had another idea. I wanted to replace Custard with Pomegranate. She's meta, she'll give your team an attack boost, and she'll help you kill enemies faster. Unfortunately, the only realistic way I could obtain her is through the mileage shop. I'm pretty broke right now, and I need way more mileage. The best way to do this is to just play story mode and grind crystals, so 
that's exactly what I did. I reached 419 before running out of stamina jellies and refreshes. To my surprise, I still didn't have enough mileage. Dang it. Welp, I guess I'm at a roadblock now. In utter defeat, I decided to go check out guild battle. I might as well get a little stronger while I wait for my stamina to recharge. So I decided to join the most random guild of all time. I wanted to join an English guild, but I couldn't find any on Hollyberry server. All my friends are on the Dark Cow server, so I guess that's too bad. Anyways, you won't believe what they did to the Red Velvet Dragon. They completely redesigned him. If anyone knows why they did it, then tell me in the comments. You know what? Let's do a guild battle now. This is gonna be so scuffed. I guess you can watch me suffer. As expected, what a great way to end a day. Day 2, I haven't been banned yet. After getting all my dailies, I was able to buy pomegranate. Here's my current team, it looks pretty solid, but I wanna make it better. I feel like my runs would be faster if I replaced Dark Choco with a DPS. I think the next cookie I'm gonna buy with mileage is Latte. She might or might not be the best choice, there's also Espresso and Poison Mushroom. You know what, I'll just go with Latte, she deals damage faster than the other two. While we grind for Latte, let's test out pomegranate in story mode. You know how in the global version of Cookie Run, Star Jellies and XP becomes a major problem in World 6? Well, in the Chinese version, XP is not that big of a deal. It's easier to maintain your cookies level cap in this version of the game. However, you still need some Star Jellies. The best way to obtain them is in the Tower of Sweet Chaos. This game mode is pretty much identical to Global Cookie Run. There's only one difference, they changed the cake pieces from red to brown. I don't understand why they had to do it, but okay. Well, back to the grind, I guess. The following Sweet Tower of Chaos gameplays from day one so oops Wait a second. Dang it, my squid ink died. I realize I may be a bit unprepared for this. Oh yeah, to make matters even worse, when I started episode 7, I ran out of stamina jellies. Dang it, another roadblock. While we wait for my stamina to recharge, we might as well prepare for the final episode. I need to make sure my cookies won't die anymore. First, I use some mileage I saved up to buy latte cookie. It's a bit late for this, but oh well. I'm able to replace Dark Chocolate with latte now, and here's my world exploration team. Using triple DPS should allow me to kill enemies faster. I also did some bounties, sweet tower of chaos runs, kingdom production and management that no one cares about, optimizing toppings, struggling to read what the topping subsets say, gotcha pulls, look what happened to pastry, and arena battles. Oh yeah, you're probably wondering what the arena's like in this version. Let's dive into the ugly side of Chinese cookie run. 
This is where you don't want to be. If you're free to play, you're unwelcome here. Especially in the Hollyberry server, the older of the two. To make matters even worse, everything's unbalanced. In one skill rotation, your cookies will get killed. Cookies tend to have higher attack but lower defense. In this version, using the jelly watch is pointless. Instead, people use the two scrolls, the branch, the feather, and the torch. How do I know this? Well, there's a little button right here. It shows you the most popular arena teams. You can see both the best treasures and the best cookies. Keep in mind, some of them aren't on here, but the best tanks are Werewolf and Madeline. The best DPS cookies would be Goldoth Mantis, Espresso, Poison Mushroom, and Latte. The best healer is Pure Vanilla, and Pomegranate's the best option if you don't have him. Red Velvet to my turn might not be good. Unfortunately, I don't have most of the meta cookies, but now it's time to share with you my experience. Here's how I thrived for the last two days inside the arena. In two days, I was able to reach Diamond 2. I'm not sure if that's good or bad, but oh well. After all we've been through, it's time to move on to Day 3. It looks like I'm still not banned. Maybe I will get away with it after all. We still need to finish what we set out to do though. It's time to complete story mode by beating episode 7. I also developed some strategies. I don't use all three of my DPS cookie skills at the same time. I spam click Goldoth Mantis' skill before I see the wave of enemies. This helps counter her slow projectile speed. After fully preparing for this fight, I'm ready to rip through this world. All those hours of grinding had led up to this moment. After getting banned, I never thought I'd be able to play this game. But now look where I am. I defied WeChat and I'm gonna kill this boss. As you can see right here, you physically can't enter World 8. Well, that was true a week ago. You see, this video took me like a week to edit and uh, it was pretty bad. It took so long that World 8's uh, kinda released now. Dang it. On the bright side, it's been 10 days but I'm still not banned. So that means I can make a part 2. Also, you should subscribe cause I'm 4. Alright, see ya.